I'm racers Marshall Pruitt. It is Wednesday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous weather. Meant to be high 70s to low 80s through the end of the week. Race day is supposed to be maybe a little touch warmer, but nothing crazy. Blue skies for days. It is gorgeous. What do we have to report today? A little bit, not a ton. Thing that made me happiest to read was on the Dryer and Reinbold racing side, that number 23 Chevy piloted by our man, Captain America, Ryan Hunter Ray. They have a sponsor for it. No more bare side pods. Root Insurance, which admittedly I've never heard of, but that's why they do this. So idiots like me learn about them. Root Insurance will be a part of their journey. Pretty cool for them. Uh, Texting with our friends on the other side of the Dry and Reinbold Racing Program, Cusick Motorsports. Steph Wilson was meant to go into surgery this morning. Uh, that got delayed a little bit, and I think he might actually be going into surgery right about now, 4, 4.30 or so. So continue uplifting him in prayer or well wishes or whatever it is that you send to folks when you want to know that you love them and hope that everything is going to turn out all right. So got Steph going into surgery, might be about three months or so worth of rehab for him. Going to stay out here. Don't know if he's going to stay out here for the whole three months, he and his wife, or head back to Colorado. But lots of great work going on on that side. Believe they should have a car that's super ready to go through tech tomorrow uh, and or Friday. But they've made great progress. Spoke with Don Cusick yesterday and took a look at that car. Last thing to mention, they're going to do a cool little special 15-minute session on Thursday for Graham Rahal in that number 23 Cusick Motorsports Dry and Reinbold Racing Chevy and Catherine Legg in the rebuilt number 44 Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing Honda. Why do those two get to go have some special time? We have Carb Day on Friday. It's two hours long. It is frenetic, crazy, tons of cars on track. Do you want two cars that were just in the wall and hard? One of them actually, the one that Graham will be driving, is a freshly built chassis. The other one was destroyed. Catherine's car fully rebuilt, same chassis. Do you want them going out, venturing out for the first time with 31 other cars and have the possibility of an oil leak or a water or this or that. Do you want those things to happen with the rest of the cars and have any of them be in jeopardy? Of course not. Absolutely love this decision by IndyCar. Perfect choice to say, hey, I'm going to let you go out. They're going to get to do ins and outs. No point in time can they go out of turn four and go past start finish. They get to leave the pits charge down the back straight and return right away. They can do that as many times as they want over that 15 minutes. What they're going to do is both leave pit lane the first time and come straight back in and stop. Their crews will take off engine covers, side pods, get the flashlights out, get the mirrors out, look at any and every little thing, see if anything's leaking, anything needs a little bit of tightening or whatever else, and then very likely put everything back on, send them back out to get a couple more of those laps just to make sure everything's good. Make sure there are no issues elsewhere with the car, mechanical side, anything else, electronics. So they'll inspect the build, make sure that's good, send it back out, make sure everything else is good. And then once we get to the end of that 15 minute session, they'll be back and wait for Friday. But perfect call by IndyCar to make sure everything is clean, clear, and safe to play with the rest of those cars, this field of 33. So since we did that DRR Cusick Motorsports car look in yesterday, wanted to do our friends at RLL and that number 44. So Derek Davidson, one of the great team leaders there, truly just one of the great guys of the paddock, rock solid person, uh, kind enough for him to tell us about the process of, hey, when a car crashes, what do you do? So he's gonna run us through all that, give us some updates, and that number 44 hot rod there for Catherine Leg is looking like it's going to be all perfect and ready to go here, get in the race, and hopefully do big things. Derek, there's been a ton of work going on behind you here since Catherine met the wall, unfortunately, on Monday. Let's give some love first to this Ray Hall Edmund Lanigan crew. Everyone's been helping. This car is looking beautiful behind you, but tell me about the team effort. I know you're proud of it. 
Yeah, I mean, the guys work really hard, you know, leading up to the month of May and, and uh, everything they do for preparation and uh, everything that's involved in that. Um, but yeah, you know, once uh, it was an unfortunate accident, of course, and they're never good here and, they, and they're, they're always a lot of work to repair them because they're usually big. And uh, yeah, they've been, uh, we haven't really extended hours per se, but we've had a lot of guys, you know, from each of the cars working on the thing. And, uh, um, yeah, the progress is going pretty well. It's adversity like this where you really get to see and feel the strength of the organization you've built. For folks who don't know, might have seen that crash and realized, holy cow, there was no part of the car left undamaged seemingly. What happens from your end, right? As one of the team leaders, car gets back here to the garage, run folks through the process. All right, yeah, the first thing we do, um, is there's two main things you look for tub damage uh, to see if you have to change the tub or um, engine repair um, and then once you finalize or you find out if the tub's good then you just start assessing everything that uh, that's broken and uh, we've been through this so many times we actually have parts built up for situations like this that you know um, that we have underwings in the truck that are already prepared so we just bring those out uh, side pods and everything else. Crash structures are hard to come by and they're rather expensive, so we actually did prep that here at the track. Um, so, you know, some things you do lose in a situation like this when you only have a couple days to repair it is a little bit of body fit and things like that. Um, but uh, our bodywork guys are really good and, and they can fit it as close as they can without actually using Bondo. They, you know, shim and, and, uh, and squeeze and push it together as best they can. But uh, usually you just start with the tub, the engine, if those things check out, then you just make a list of everything that's broken and you just start gathering it from the truck. Donnie Stewart kind of coordinates all of that. Uh, for our team and he, he's super organized and he's been around for a long time so uh, we have sub assemblies built up and, and uh, um, it just seems to flow pretty well. You've got Cuz working behind you, another big veteran. You've got a lot of veterans in particular on the 44 car here. I would imagine that when the car comes back kind of beaten up, they're not standing around waiting for instructions. They're probably all arms and elbows and just yeah. ripping things apart. It's kind of a built-in knowledge of what to do in the crew side. Yeah, we had uh, we had two hours roughly from the time that we crashed to the garage closed, and uh, we we stripped it down. We assessed everything that we needed. We got everything on the truck, or I'm sorry, in a van to go out for repair. Um, and then we had a list going of everything that we needed to pick up, and we went and picked up as much as we could at Delara, and then uh, um, and we made a list to go out for that that next morning to get repaired. And, uh, and then Donnie basically came up with a game plan. You know, he had uh, um, Ryan come in first thing, I think it was Tuesday morning to do the crash structure. And then there's just kind of, you know, the sequence of events on how the car gets assembled. It's obviously, that's how you start with it and, and work your way backwards from there, but, uh, or I guess forward from there. Um, and then uh, finally, you get to you get all of that and then you you got to have the graphics guys come in and do the, the the final wrap of the car and you know the livery and the scheme and all of that so that's kind of where we're at now the car's already been fired um the underwing should be going up on it and uh it should look like a real car tomorrow um unfortunately you can't do all this at the same time as the graphics guys so they're coming in late they're going to work till probably 10 o'clock tonight and uh it should be when we come back in tomorrow morning it should be it should look like nothing ever happened Let's close on this, and this is the amazing part that I hope IndyCar fans are always amazed by. That car went into the wall a ton. We're obviously thankful Cat is, is fine and healthy. This car should go out on carb day and perform like nothing ever happened to it. Yeah. I used to do this stuff, and it still blows my mind that you guys are, this thing, it might even be faster, who knows? But tell me about the precision involved too, brother, because it isn't just changing parts, it's really getting this car back to a sweet spot. Yeah, well, we can't set the underwings, obviously, uh, like we do on our flat plate at home before we come out here, but, uh, um, so that, that might not be exactly as we do at the shop, but we can, we can set them within the tech window at tech, um, which we'll do tomorrow, I'm sorry, on Friday, and, uh, yeah, it shouldn't, uh, like I told Catherine, she was apologizing to everybody, and I said, hey, you know, Friday morning, you're not going to notice the difference between this one and the last one. So, uh, um, and uh, hopefully it is faster. Amen. Thank you, brother.